AMD has responded to NVIDIA's uber expensive RTX 4000 series GPUs with their Radeon RX 7900 series. Don't get us wrong, you'll still pay a pretty penny for them as the 7900 XT will cost 900 bucks while you'll pay a cool thousand for the top end 7900 XTX. I guess $100 for the extra X is a fair deal, especially when you consider Nvidia's top two cards start at 1200. But are these cards a better value or is it another case of you get what you pay for? Well, AMD's strategy has always been to compete on value against the likes of Nvidia, but this time, one of the reasons Team Red's offerings are cheaper clearly doesn't have to do with lower performance. The RX 7000 series utilizes GPUs made up of chiplets. So instead of having a monolithic chip that's one solid piece like Nvidia does, AMD instead is putting several smaller chiplets together to form one cohesive GPU. Now this saves AMD money because the chiplet approach improves yields. That is, if one chiplet is defective, they can throw out just that chiplet instead of the entire GPU, which makes manufacturing cheaper. Additionally, the chiplets that are dedicated to memory control and cache are made on a six nanometer process, allowing AMD to cut costs where they can while still giving gamers a high performance rendering chiplet on the five nanometer process. But does this necessarily mean that AMD has produced a lineup that can beat Nvidia at a lower price without compromises? Well, we'll tell you right after we thank Secret Lab for sponsoring this video. Secret Lab chairs are engineered to keep you incredibly comfortable for long hours at work and play, like their Titan Evo 2022 chair with four-way lumbar support, ultra comfortable seat materials, and more. All chairs come with up to a five-year extended warranty and 49-day return policy, and you can save up to 250 USD during their extended Christmas sale today using the link down below. As much as AMD has done a really good job with RX 7000 and its RDNA 3 architecture, there are a couple aspects where the lower price point does track with what the cards offer. The big elephant in the room is ray tracing, which you might have predicted considering that we're now on the third generation of cards where Nvidia has really emphasized ray tracing as a strength of their products, which you can even see from their inclusion of dedicated ray tracing cores and even in how they've named some of their GPUs. AMD, on the other hand, has cards that support ray tracing, but don't quite have the same chops for it as Nvidia. But here's the thing, plenty of games still do not support ray tracing. And even if your favorite titles do, you may not find yourself caring all that much at all. For many gamers, more conventional visual enhancements, such as higher texture quality and more aggressive anti-aliasing, makes a more noticeable difference than ray traced light. And that doesn't even mean that the RX 7000 series is bad at ray tracing. It just means that the team green options are better at it, at least for now. Now the other way in which RX 7000 looks to lag a bit behind RTX 4000 is power consumption, possibly due to those six nanometer chiplets which is a bit disappointing as chiplets are traditionally thought of as being more power efficient than monolithic designs. The 7900 XTX, which competes with the RTX 4080, tends to draw more power across titles and in synthetic benchmarks. So this could be a consideration if you're running up against limits with your power supply. However, the difference isn't obscene and the 7900 XTX superior performance in certain titles may be more than worth it for many of you. Which card wins in which game depends quite a bit on whether that particular title is optimized for Nvidia or AMD. And if you're considering the slightly cheaper 7900 XT, know that while it doesn't quite hit the heights of the RTX 4080, it's not terribly far off and will save you an additional hundo. But be warned that also means it's not nearly as good of a value, which is actually kind of crazy to say. We also cannot ignore how well these cards could end up maturing over time not just with driver updates as we saw with the RX 6000 series, but also with FSR3, the next generation of AMD's upscaling technology that competes with Nvidia's DLSS. FSR3 isn't out yet, but it should be sometime in 2023, and Team Red is promising significant frame rate gains once it drops. However, it's an open technology that even works on Nvidia cards, so it's really unclear at this point as to whether RX 7000 will give you an advantage if you use FSR3. And it also generally stinks to pay good money today on the promise that the product might be worth the cost tomorrow. So what's the bottom line here? Right now, if you don't care about ray tracing and can afford putting a few more watts of load on your power supply, AMD's RX 7000 is probably a better buy. If ray tracing is a big deal to you though, you might wanna spring for an Nvidia RTX 4000 card. 
Whatever you do, be sure to read benchmark results to find out how the cards perform in the games you want to play before buying. Let us know down in the comments which card you're going with, but please don't turn the discussion into a classic red versus green flame war. They're both doing us dirty these days. Dislike both of them. But don't dislike this video, unless you disliked it. Then, then you can hit the dislike button. If you like it, hit the like button. Check out our other videos, comment below with video suggestions, and don't forget to subscribe and follow TechWiki. And our rival channel that we have Flame Wars with, TechLinked.